Well, what's up, model building fans? Hey, it's BG, and our buddy Jason over at Blue Ox Model Shop has dropped a challenge on us. It's uh, sharing that build space. And we've, you know, we've done a little bit of sharing and show and tell here and there over the last few months of uh, things we have changed, but uh, the room overall is a system. The build space is definitely a system. Uh, it's not a good system. It's not a good system at all. It's kind of a crappy system, actually. But it gets the job done, and uh, it's uh, actually it's a hobby in its own. So we'll show you our area. It's been a little while, so hopefully uh, things are entertaining. So starting off with a view that not many people get to see, we'll be outside in the hallway, entering the space here. And right over here on our left, we have... Uh, this is one of this is half of the toolbox of fame. So we've got a lot of decals on here from a lot of different channels and some magnets and stuff stuck in here. And then of course uh projects that are perpetually not getting done. I'm still working on those. Uh but uh, yeah, down here we've got screwdrivers and measuring tapes, plus also uh ring sizers, I guess. I don't know. Who put that in there? But uh, we got uh, cutting and pinching, so we have everything to do with bending wire, uh, cutting wire, splicing wire, stripping wire insulation, and then my favorite, MISC, where we have just a bunch of... Oh, dang, that's where that got off to you. Okay. Uh, wire bending implements, candles for seances, I guess, shrink tubing. Oh, I guess the candles are for the shrink tubing. And then just little odds and ends, because MISC is one of my favorite things. And of course we have a decal drawer. Look at all this. Oh, this is a full inch deep of just decals. Old decals, new decals. If I get something that I, I don't have a home for right away for decals, it goes right in there so it's nice and flat. As, as flat can be, I guess. And then we have styrene and tubing. So all different sizes of styrene, all different types of tubing, both brass and aluminum. And then... Uh, all sorts of just all sorts of uh, styrene bits. So, if you're building your workspace, I really suggest that you look into getting yourself just packs of this stuff because when you start doing your scratch building, and that will happen eventually, you will want to start scratch building. This stuff comes in real handy. So, there we go. And then down at the bottom here, we've got supplies. Got a bunch of this tubing hose that we got at the uh, Lobby of Hobbies. Uh, that comes in really handy for radiator tubing if you need to do that. Uh, electrical wire, we've got bunches and bunches of ribbon for doing um, seat belt material. Um, it, electronic schematics, apparently. Uh, some, some little bits of uh, sanding film that I don't hardly ever use anymore because I found something better. Uh, nail application, I found out from uh, Charlie Mack years ago that this is actually a good idea. Uh, now, I don't put it on my nails like he does, but I've I've actually used this as uh, uh, seat material like to cover the seats and, and hot rods and stuff. And then we have all sorts of solder, different sizes of solder for doing different aspects of vehicles. And then uh, embossing powder. That stuff's real handy when you want to use that for flocking carpets, stuff like that. That stuff costs a lot less than sometimes the fuzzy flock stuff you can buy. So if you're going to be doing a lot of that, that's a, that's a handy thing to do there. Let's pull back just a tick. There we go. That's my official IPMS badge right there. That's me. That is not me. That's Alan from Space 1999. And hey, why do you have an outlet in the middle of the wall, Brian? Well, I will tell you that. This room used to be the laundry room eons ago. This was the room that Alice used to work in. Uh, while she was uh, working for the Brady Bunch. But um, before we bought the house, somebody had turned this into a fourth bedroom. So now it's a build space. And having outlets up high like this is awesome. I mean, it makes life so much easier. So that's that's been nice. Uh, we got our G.I. Joe collection here. I, I blame Jason. I regret nothing. Uh, this is a, a Snake Eyes uh, picture I had done when I was in high school. So that's like old. And then I'm a big fan of the space shuttle. Local artist was making prints of these, so I had to go ahead and grab one of those. Um, that's air. Over here we have some hats. Boba Fett hat. And then we have, when we went to Newport Beach, and then, of course, uh, classic plastic one, uh, classic plastic uh, set. I'm wearing the one from uh, 101 to hang out. And then a couple of award plaques here that I got a long time ago. 
Uh, oh, yeah, here are our uh, show bags. So when we go to shows, we take those bags with us. And let's see, anything fun down there? Nope, nothing down there but bunnies of dust. And I'm going to go over to the right. Move the chair out of the way. Sure, I'm glad the chair's on wheels because that gets kicked around a lot. Uh, so we have a, just a smattering of Hot Wheels, and we've got an awesome Matchbox car there from our buddy over at the Autistic Modeler. Let's take a zoom into that there. Look, that's a nice vintage one, isn't it? Love that engine on there. That gigantic flower on the front's cool. Uh, I, just, I had to print this out from the internet. Tashi Station, it's a great place to go get converters. Um, this was a, a little sign that was made by my cousin's daughters. They are just, they're the cutest little things in the world. Um, they're, they're budding young artists. Uh, let's see here. So um, this here and then the red one over there are little bins that I, I, I swapped some stuff to my friend Chris. And um, now I'm incorporating them for Dremel. Everything in here is Dremel related. So that's that's helpful. Got a, got a uh, eggplant sitting there. This is, that's a paint shaker, believe it or not. Uh, let's see. And we got some polishing compounds that are just floating in the wings. Nice uh, collection of painted spoons for upcoming projects. And then this, I got this at Ikea. Um, actually, I swapped a friend for this for something else. Um, but yeah, I got this. He got it at Ikea, and it's actually really useful. The drawers are, are nice. I like the, the, the finger holes in there. The drawers are really useful for putting in a Q-tip and a blending stick, apparently. I'll have to talk to my assistant about that. And, oh, yeah, here we go. Here's a, <laughs> a sanding stick. Whose room is it? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so we got uh, some brake rotors uh, drying on this little foam block here. Now, this isn't the normal foam block that squishes when you, this is more of a sty piece of styrofoam. Um, but um, that other stuff that squishes and kind of crumbles, I hate the feel of that stuff. It's nasty. Uh, this is the bin of many things because I have many things stuck in this bin. Um, and then uh, an airplane stand. One day when I build an airplane, it'll go on that stand. And then, how's it going, Megatron? Uh, we've got some pill bottles here that we're going to turn into figure stands so that when we start painting figures, uh, we'll have something to actually anchor those things to. Um, got some paints here uh, that we need to do a video on. I, I owe Kenny a video on that. I'm probably uh, not on his Christmas card list anymore, but, you know, <laughs> life, man. Uh, over here, we have all of our uh, weathering jars i guess you want to call it uh our our um our panel liners we got orange we've got light gray we've got dark gray this is uh, a metal primer a transparent metal primer we got from a friend of ours mr joe uh this is something my nephew printed up and it fits these jars perfectly and no i can't get him to print anymore because his printer died and um well that's that story so uh some some uh, jar paints that I found, some Model Master jar paints I found in my uh, my uh, paint stash, which is out in the garage, which is nowhere near this room. Uh, so this facility here has many, 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 many things. Uh, so we have different types of knives. And there we got some cutting and pinching. Over here we've got uh, scalpel blades and scalpels, blending uh, blending sticks. We've got Odd bits of pipe and tubing, odd bits of styrene, tweezers, because I am a, a tweezer uh, aficionado, smaller bits of styrene, and then um, those micro micro paint paint brushes. That's handy there. Let's see here. Oh, box cutters. You know, you wouldn't believe how many boxes you have to cut open at the bench here. Different types of drill. Sometimes I get so tired of having swap out drill bits. Because I have popular ones I use. I just went ahead and, and purchased a couple of extra. Because, uh, you know, when you go to a show, sometimes there's always somebody selling these things, right? So, uh, one of these pin vices. So, I bought a couple of pin vices and put my popular drill bits in there. My favorite ones in there. Down here, we have some glues. Excuse me there, Sergeant. And then, um, yes, Band-Aids. Those are handy. Band-Aids are always handy. Bits from cars that haven't been applied. Sanding sticks little micro sanding sticks and then we have razor saws and then just some, some junk here and there and then some uh, some putty i don't ever use putty anymore uh our metallic finish stuff so we got the ushi powder that the the weird uh chrome ferret poops and then uh some true metal from ak i think it was and then uh uh airbrush stuff there i'm gonna pause for a second 
So then back here we just have this little uh, Lazy Susan with a bunch of bunch of stuff on there, all different types of paints. This is actually rubbing alcohol in there. The, 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 this type of thing here, I got this idea from my friend John. Uh, having that curved uh, top there really makes it easy to just uh, apply it, rubbing alcohol wherever you need it exactly. So that's cool. Mixing cups down here. Just all sorts of stuff. Uh, anything that's not to me uh, kind of gets stuck over here. And then let's pull back. Oh, I got this guy here at a show. Uh, I think it was up in Vegas. I was talking to our friend Steve over at uh, Value Gear. He was actually selling these. And I thought, you know, this is awesome because I can put my two favorite glues in here. And of course, my third favorite glue right there. Uh, this just big enough to hold actually the micro set bottles. If you wanted to put those in there, holds them perfectly. But I like having this pill jar with uh, the, these super fine Q-tips. And it's not even a Q, it's more of a point. But uh, it's got little holes for, for my favorite jeweler files and some of my favorite tweezers and pin vices and knives. And little BG, haven't seen him in forever. Back wall, we have just bins uh, that we got at Harbor Freight. Let's set this aside here. Yes, uh, this, was, this was a gift by my cousin when they came to visit. Miniature Lincoln Logs. They claim they actually work, so I, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, I put a board on top there so I'd have a little bit more shelf space. Um, and then, of course, there's Mrs. BG there with her with her avatar. And then, uh, let's see, electricity. Let's see, wall mounts, awesome. High up wall mounts. Got a uh, paper towel holder with some of the shop towels. Those are very handy. They're, they look a lot better than regular paper towels. They are a bit of an expense, but... I mean, I, I bought a pack of those like four years ago. I'm like, I better start using these things. So I, I, I swapped it out. Uh, let's see here. Um, just more parts drying and curing. There's the famous eyeglass holder. Uh, different bins with different things. These are sanding sticks there. And then we got Q-tips and sanding pads and uh, bottle tops for mixing stuff. So this is what I was talking about, about using the pill jars as a holder for uh, miniature figures. So there's that. You got pens. So I have uh, small tip color pens, large tip color pens, uh, black pens, and then over here uh, more different versions of black pens and then metallic pens there. Uh, we have some glue back there and then the rock is face down for some reason. I should put them on a pill jar. And then the, the actual build space. This is the tripod that I use when we film uh, on um, on the desk, as you can see here, uh, and it's, it's a pretty robust guy. Uh, this does not come with this. It was two different pieces that we just cobbled together, and now it's uh, it's fairly sturdy, uh, fairly unbreakable. Knock on all the woods. Um, this is what I watch you guys on, and of course we got we're we're in the middle of uh, Mr. Blue Ox's video there. Um, some nice uh, some nice drinks with a cap for safety. Uh, back there, we've got Yoda full of pipettes, and then we got a carburetor mug full of uh, paint brushes. And let's see here. Oh, this this is just a drawer full of, let's see here, just full of knickknacks and bric-a-bracs. Like the legal disclaimer that I often say on the model car on the uh, scale model car podcast. And then also, this is an idea I've been uh, working on is writing down notes on three by five cards for builds because it's getting to the point now where um it's been so long since i built some stuff that i want to take to shows i've forgotten what i've done to them so that's a great little thing to help me remember what we got going on down below we have a model case with models in it <laughs> it's the only place i can put it gigantic speaker that little black box on top of that's full of sprue uh, whenever I'm working on a model kit, I don't toss the sprue in the trash, which is over there. I toss the sprue in that, that little box. And then if I am missing a part and I may, maybe I missed and didn't clip it off there, I go back and look. Sure enough, it's usually on the sprue, not in the trash. So that's where I like to keep the, uh, the off cut stuff until the project is done and completed. And then I can move it off to, uh, to the recycling bin. But, um, we have some nice little cubbies over here with some of the um got some flame toys got got uh, uh snake eyes ultra magnus optimus prime there's a gundam there i got bumblebee i got a johan kit that i still haven't finished yet and then over here we have even more stuff that we're working on down below we have uh our bottle of future that's a that's a vintage bottle of future right there i think that's from 2002 <laughs> 2002 
that's old. Uh, so it does yellow over time, as you can see. And then uh, here we have the binder of fame. And then see how chunky that is? And then we have uh, uh, stuff for our Brian Lindy comics there. And then these bins here are various stuffs. Like uh, this one, we have our Iceman and our photo etch stuff. Uh, that's all, that's all kind of grouped in there. And then over here, polishing stuff. Uh, so the, the, the waxes and things have to go down into there. So uh, polishing stuff, gloves and everything like that. Bottle caps. My buddy Chris, every once in a while, will just gift me bags of bottle caps. I uh, love it, love it, love it, love it. I uh, can always use that stuff. And then over here, over here, we have stuff from Steve at Value Gear and just odds and ends. Bricks, bricks and bracks, I like to say. So that's that's that half of the room. Uh, over here is just uh, a metal cabinet. It used to be on wheels, but these, these, these drawers are so sticky that I kept pulling it across the room. So um, odds and ends, this is like uh, just highlighters and, and markers and pens and stuff that I, that I sometimes need when I'm doing uh, work on instructions. Um, scissors, very useful. And then of course the eye thing charging cable since you know those things are rare now drill bits and and uh these to me things are cute but they're not i don't know at, at one time i thought they were cool nowadays i'm like you can buy a dremel for the same price or i should say i shouldn't say dremel the um what the heck is this thing called oh yeah the tack life thing this thing does better than either one of those two to me of things so i mean this is a cute little novelty thing to have but i wouldn't if you're serious about doing a lot of drilling or uh, uh yeah a lot of drilling or whatever don't don't waste your time on those anyway it's the only thing about to me i don't care for uh oh that came off so yeah just even more uh tweezers back there like i said i'm a fan of tweezers uh this one here has all of our sanding type of stuff and then I've just bought this recently because I think this these are great for cleaning out the grooves and files. So got that for that. All different types of sanding pads. And down here we have uh, miscellaneous. Got some razor saws. Got the uh, lenses for the uh, for my for my cheaters. Here's a tire jar of shifters. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I uh, got some black thread. You never know when you're gonna need black thread. Uh, micro liquid tape. I tried this out. It's not really for me. I, I don't I don't mock it. It's just uh, I don't use it that way. Here's the stapler you guys might have recognized, the red stapler. And then this is a, a, a I guess the best way to say it is a dry brushing kit. So really cool stuff. I'm learning how to use that. And then da, 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 da. here we have this is for when we're painting. Going to be doing some spray painting. All different types of clips uh old uh, paint sticks and then we have little tiny alligator clips on skewers so that we can clip stuff and and uh, make forests of parts uh this is just craft sticks and then sometimes we'll use this blue gunk here that you can get online at the amazon it's called blue tack uh mush it up and then stick it on the things it's actually it's a good temporary holder and then more alligator clips over there and then down here is just this is another box of misc uh so i mean like this is basically stuff that i have in the room that didn't really have a place in the house but i didn't want to have to find a place in the garage for just a little bit of this stuff so uh you know like thumbtacks like where where do you keep thumbtacks all right so that is that for the desk area over here we have the the new painting booth system so uh, we've got a little anchor on the side here for our airbrush. And then uh, we took out one drawer so that we had enough vertical space so we could put the compressor in there. Chewy, take the compressor in the back. Uh, let's see here. So got the compressor, got our, our, our clean out jar, some pipe cleaners for cleaning out the, uh, uh, the airbrush. Here's the airbrush box and here's some airbrush fluids there. And then let's see, let's close that up without slicing that up here we have just some more bric-a-brac painting painting stuff I, I do have some paints around here someplace more sharpies in the bag in the boxes because you never know when you're gonna need enough sharpies um got uh, some tulip fabric paints here this stuff is cool 
This stuff's cool because you can actually use this to, to fill sometimes the uh, the joins between parts if it's got a little bit of a gappage in there. So this stuff can come in handy with that. You cannot sand it. <coughs> Excuse me. You cannot sand it, but you can moisten your finger uh, any way you choose and uh, wipe off the excess. And then when it dries, it does shrink a little bit. So you might have to do two applications or more. But um, sometimes it's better than putty. And then there's that. And then... Here's all the military flat colors for uh, for Tamiya. And then up here are the uh, the glossier colors for Tamiya, plus a couple of other things in the back there, like my MCW paints back in there. Those are the, These are the lacquer ones. That's why they're in tall bottles. And then up here. So I finally realized, you know what? I need to cover my spray booth when not in use to help keep it a little bit cleaner. And just stuck some magnets on top of here, up on, on top and then underneath. And then, ta-da! There we go. So uh, parts for the um, for the Mustang still curing up here, uh, still looking good. So I'm really excited about that. And then uh, that that GTR that I'm still working on. So got that all sorted out there. So I, I feel better about having this cover on here because then I can put stuff in there and not let it get. And I don't have to worry about it getting dusty. All right now. <laughs> Onto this part of the aspect. So not only do we have build space in, in, in our area, but we also have an entire library of model kits. Uh, none of these are for sale. I do not do trades. A lot of guys have asked in the past, hey, you want to do a trade? If I am uh, feel like selling something or getting rid of it, um, I, I do it. Sometimes I'll, I'll remove something from the stash because I want the space that it can provide me because I got something else I want to get. Uh, we are at capacity. Um, if, if, if I'm getting rid of a kit, I really don't want to fill the hole with something else. So we don't do trades. And then sometimes, um, uh, the trade thing can be a little complicated depending on where the people are located in the world too. So large kits up there on the top. Oh yeah. Then I also have my golf oil and my Steve McQueen poster from the movie Le Mans. And then, of course, uh, my Sky Striker G.I. Joe poster. Keep them flying. And, oh, you want to see something? Okay, we'll get back to this in a second. But you want to see something gross? Look at this wire management. Would you think that I was in the te was a technician in the theater at one time? <laughs> yeah, that's that's messy. Hey, it works. Hey, it works. Uh, let's see here. So, um, Ravel Germany kits. And down below here we have Fujimi. And then back there we have Bandai. And then down here, we have a little bit more Fujimi. And then we have some of our resin kits and um, some of our Iceman kits and stuff. Heller kits. Got some sci-fi back tucked in there. Down below, it's kind of uh, got some Italary or Italy, however you want to pronounce it. Either way is correct. I put it both ways. And then uh, just some random stuff down here, like some um, Ravel, Ravel aircraft kits. A couple of... Yeah, a bunch of aircraft kits down there. And then down on the very bottom, we have a, a spaceship kit and a log hauler. Uh, one day, one day. Just zoom back out here. And then over on this wall, we have our AMT kits. Look at all those Corvairs, boys. AMT kits. Then down below, we have the first half of the Tamiya stuff with a couple of spillage from, uh, from the Germany kits. And then more Tamiya kits, and then Ravel kits, and then down here are Ravel 124 scale kits, and uh, kits without boxes, um, and then some Gunsenyo kits, and a bell kit, just that one odd bell kit. And let's see here, do, 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 do. over here is a little bit of spillage from the AMT stuff, and then this whole stack here belongs to my nephew Jake. And this whole stack belongs to my to his brother Dex, and then we have our Back to the Future kits. These are here's our motorcycle kits. I figured um, <laughs> the speeder bike was a motorcycle, so it goes with that stuff. Uh, this okay. So here's some some uh, ancillary mis uh, miscellaneous uh, military stuff, right? But this is the shelf of shame I talk about once in a while. It's our street machine build. There's our pro street build from a couple of years ago. There's our NASCAR build from earlier that last year. Yeah, not happy about having that stuff there, but it's we're working on it. Here's some kits 
that don't really have a home. We're just trying to figure out what's going on with those. And th this is the drawer that's missing from the uh, spray cabinet. Uh, here we have Hasegawa kits. I like, I really like my uh, my my rally cars. Next to Hasegawa, we have the Oshima kits. And then over here, we have some um, Johan kits. Uh, down below, we have Monogram kits. And then over to the side, Batmobile kits. I took Batmobiles from all the different makers and grouped them all into one section. So I have a Batmobile section. And then down here is the stash from my uncle's estate. And then right next to that is my bins of things. So I have wheels. I have, I should say I have tires. I have wheels. I have tires with wheels. And then down below is uh, just like um, leftover parts, bags of leftover parts from other builds. And now, oh, and uh, Jason's mother-in-law's um, uh, curtains there. Here, we're going to show you the, um, the closet of despair. Here we go. This is not usually seen by anybody that, that has lived. Uh, but uh, here we have most of our military stuff up here. Some great vintage kits up here. Uh, let's see here. An LAPD kit. I'm still missing the light bar. I thought I had that. Here's a very vintage uh, AMT kit. That's the, um, the Nomad kit. And then this awesome Testarossa kit. Behind this, we have some, some Millennium Falcon Star Wars kit stacked up there. And some G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, down below, we have G.I. Joe Battle Platform. Excuse me, uh, Command Center, I should say. Some bag kits. More military stuff. That These are stacked back in there. And then a Lego Scooby Mobile, so <laughs> Lego Mystery Machine. Uh, more GI Joe stuff. I'm gonna just pan to the side here. Uh, this is actually Mrs. BG's box. I don't even know what's in there, but it's it's in here. Uh, let's see. And then uh, airplane kits, and then more airplane kits, and then um, an airsoft Tommy gun because you know those, those are handy. And then this thing that, that helps dry off model kits and hair. Uh, let's see. So, uh, oh, water slide decal paper. I'm trying to find a good replacement for the stuff that they used to, the testers used to sell. I think they still sell it. I don't know. But I'm just looking for a, a cheaper version of that. And then um, this is just a box full of Lego instructions uh, from the kits that we built. More military stuff here. That's a dead cat. You don't believe me? There we go. That's a dead cat. Uh, this box down here is G.I. Joe figures. Um, that's the shark. <laughs> I should say that's the jaws and that's the shark. Um, I, I use these once a week and then, um, we don't talk about that, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the closet of despair. And then because this was the, uh, laundry room, we actually have an old ironing board cut out. Lo ironing board's long gone. Linda's dad. I don't know. I don't think he took the ironing board out, but this, he, he changed it and put these little shelves in. Because uh, he used to reload ammunition in this room. Uh, so I just started using it as a curio cabinet. So here's my curios. My uh, my um, Ghostbusters Lego set. These are the Bandai uh, <laughs> Imperial Troopers, I guess you want to say. Uh, tribute to our car, Kowalski. We used to have a 2018 Dodge Challenger uh, RT package. It had the blackout package. That thing was awesome. Uh, but is now um, in somebody else's hands because now we have another Subaru uh, Lego kit of Big Bang Theory. Let's see, here's our droids from Bandai. Down below here are some vintage um, Kenner action figures with some golden figures. We, we found these at an at a antique shop or a five and nine shop, something like that. And um, they, they were already painted gold in the packaging. So I thought, hey, I'm, I'm going to glue some wires on those and just make them in the Christmas ornaments. And there we go. And then miniature box uh, boxes that came with some of the A&T kits that, that they did back in the day. And then down there at the very bottom, let's move this out of the way here. Down at the very bottom is just some paint, some leftover paint stuff. And now we come to the entry area. This is the Tamiya paint rack. Um, usually I buy like one thing of paint, maybe two things of paint at a time. So it took years to grow this collection. And you'll see that there's just some cap sitting there, right? That's because the paint ran out, but I didn't really see a need to replace it. So I just kept the cap to remind me that, yeah, that's the color I had used in the past. So uh, also like um, like TS8 here, 
I ran out of that paint, but I don't need to replace it right now. So I just have the cap sitting. This is all numerically, uh, uh, I don't want to say alphabetized, numerically sorted. And then down below at the very bottom is our Splash Paints collection right there. And it's on special little hopper thing. So, so yeah, that is basically the room. We have one last section to show you. Hopefully this isn't going too long. But we're going to have to switch off this light because we're going to be looking into the sun here. So what you guys never see is a shelf that's over my workspace. And that and this is the shelf of, um, I don't know what to call it, but it's just, I, I have stuff on here collected of, of little things that I've done, like, like fun little things that I've built over the years. And then this area here is all stuff that was gifted to me by uh, family, friends, and YouTube buddies. So, you know, we've got the, the skeletons from Rick Zink. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. Yeah. BSA Dry Dock. <laughs> yeah, this is, you were allowed to kick them, I guess, if you had one of these. Um, uh, if you had one of these, you were allowed to kick Brian over at BSA Dry Dock. And then, uh, let's see, just um, all sorts of stuff, man. Th this was a shop card that was sent to us by... Um, uh, Matt over ESU Warrior. Can't really get a good light on that, but uh, it was the March to Space group build. If you if you joined in that, you got one of those. So that's kind of a cool little thing. And then just all sorts of stuff. Just all sorts of stuff grouped up here. Once in a while, I have to go through and kind of... Uh, it's kind of like a, a, a memento shelf. Uh, above that is the MPC shelf. We keep the MPC stuff separate from other model kits. If you know, you know. I'm just kidding. No, I just, I just didn't think that they should be mixed in with the AMT stuff because they're their own brand, you know. And then, cause like, um, I have Monogram and then uh, Ravel, so I have MPC and I have AMT. Up above, we have our sci-fi stuff, our Star Treks and Space 1999. And then over here, we have a shelf. Got a, oh, I need to change that. We are not in March anymore. Ta -ta. There we go. Ooh, Coca-Cola. Neat. Maybe I need to turn this on. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so uh, stuff up here is waiting for repair and to be finished. <laughs> uh, but uh, some, some cool uh, figures that my uh, brother had given me for my birthday several years ago. Um, this guy here is still waiting for repairs. This really cool woody wagon. Uh, we got the uh, Star Trek Discovery back there. Looking forward to the final season of that. And then this, I'm very proud of this. This is my IPMS, National IPMS Award for uh, for the humor category. So it's officially the funniest guy in IPMS for a full year. And then at the very top is the Nostalgia Shelf. Everything up here is something I have built in the past, but want a chance to build it again, but gooder. So, Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, look, a Corvair. How rare. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. That's it. That's the whole room, guys. I want to step back here and just give you an overall look of the, the chaos. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, you, room has been rearranged several times in the past few years. As a matter of fact, there used to be even cabinets on the wall. I took those down and then I put up these shelves. And now I wish I hadn't put up these shelves because uh, these racks over here are on wheels. And sometimes I want to, I don't want these here. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's put those racks over there, you know, and then kind of swap the room around. But I can't because these shelves are anchored to the wall now. So I'm kind of stuck with it. But uh, yeah, so, you know, if I, if I just want to rearrange things, I have to take these all down and find places for all that material and stuff. So. It, it, it's a it's a jail of my own of my own creation i guess is the best way to say that anyway there you go hope you guys enjoyed the tour any questions please ask down below i'd be happy to answer them and uh looking forward to your video on this y'all take it easy and we'll see you next time